you're going to worship God in the beauty of his holiness. You got to prepare yourself for this present moment that you're in. Amen. That present space, that present space that you're in. Make up in your mind right now. Hey, it's, it's two minutes after 11. I don't care what's on the television camera. I don't care what's up there. I, I might be ugly or whatever. Somebody may see me outside of my character. But I came to give God praise today. And, and I don't want to be by myself. Amen. But can I tell you what? Praise is contagious. And if you're not careful, if you begin to praise, that might be somebody on your rope might praise God because they see you praising God because they know what you've been through. And if they know what you've been through and you can praise God anyhow, that might spark them into another side, another kind of praise. Come on, let's give him a praise, right? Let your neighbor know that God has been good to me. Come on, tell him he's been good to me all week long. He, he, amen. He woke me up for six days and here I am on this seventh day call the, the Christian Sabbath to give him praise and to give him worship. And if you're in your home right now, if you're watching us from your bedroom or wherever it is, you ought to give God some praise. You ought to wake up somebody and just holler and tell them God has been good to me all week long. Amen. All the shootings that's been going on, all the accidents that have been going on, everything all around us, but he spared our lives. And here we are on a Sunday morning. Amen. To tell him thank you all over again. Amen. Put a little money in our pocket for six days, five days of work, six days of work. Put food on our table every morning, afternoon, and evening, and some of us for a late supper. And we come to tell God thank you today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Come on. It didn't say we will. It said I will rejoice. It didn't say depending on who's in my section, I will rejoice. It didn't say whether my husband, my wife, my cousin, my brother, or my grandmama would. I will rejoice and be glad in that day. Come on, tell God thank you on a third Sunday morning in July. As hot as it is outside, God, God is still good on the inside. And I don't know about you, but I think we ought to tell him thank you. You ought to tell him something in your, in the, deep in your spirit to get somebody else in here to motivated to worship God because he has been good. How many of us been through a few things this week? Come on. You had a bill you couldn't pay, but the bill got paid anyway. Come on. You were almost out of gas, but somehow the Lord made a way out of no way. Come on. You remember what God has done for you. And if he's done all of that, hey, you ought to tell him thank you. Some of us had our doctor appointment and we walked in and they said everything was all right. You ought to come out praising God. We ought to tell him thank you for the trouble that we could have got in. That the Lord kept us out of some stuff. Come on, he kept us out of some mess that we could have got in. But we thank God for another day and tell him thank you. Come on and thank God. That, come on, we can't go nowhere until we get to praise, uh, get the atmosphere set. Come on, you need to stay to the atmosphere, get ready for worship and for praise. We ought to be able to tell God something on the inside that he's worthy. Whatever they're doing in the back, tell them they need to come on out of the back and come on into worship service. We need to tell God, thank you right now for another day's journey. I'm going to stay right here. I, don't, I ain't felt it all the way. I ain't felt it everywhere yet. We need to let God know. Let him know that I'm here to give you some praise. I don't care who preach. I don't care what they preach about. I don't care who taught the Sunday school lesson. I came to give God some praise. We worship him in the beauty of his holiness. And oh, we give him praise today. Amen. We thank him and give him glory. Amen.
thanking you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us all the way from our early ancestors of our lives to the end time.
awesome is it that God would call you friend? Oh, my word. What a way to begin worship. We want to welcome you to the ark this morning. And we are aware that some of us have traveled some bumpy roads this past week. And yet, here you are in the sanctuary and online at your designated worship spot, whether it was chosen by you or by circumstance. Here we are prepared to worship. To God be the glory. Here are a few reminders, reminders for you this morning. Now, we will be serving ice cream immediately following the service. And I know the July birth month crew is really excited about that, but it's because it's National Ice Cream Day, so y'all will be all right. Also, the youth ministry will be dispensing gift cards to each of the school-age students in conjunction with this ice cream social. So be sure to meet in the fellowship hall for the ice cream and the presentation of the gift cards immediately following service. And then join us on the fifth Sunday, July 30th at 10 a.m. for our combined Sunday school classes. Classes are taught by Pastor Howard and all teachers are urged to attend as well as the members. God's word is powerful. And when we study it with other believers, it unifies and strengthens relationships. Also, please don't rush off after services over that Sunday because we're planning a reception for our new members. Come meet them and let them know who you are. And also, save these dates. There's a few of them. Every Thursday in August will be revival this year. It's going to be a little different and something really special. We'll meet each Thursday at 7 p.m. And starting us off will be Pastor Jackie Leverett Bostick. And then she'll be on the 3rd. And then Pastor Charles Green on the 10th. Then we welcome Pastor Claude Harris on the 17th. And Pastor Jamal Welcher on the 24th. The theme is Connecting Kingdom Communities. Join us, won't you? Truly, you can say that God is your everything. Can anybody say that today? That God is truly your everything. Whatever you need him to be in the time of sorrow, anybody know him to be everything? Whatever it is this morning, God he is your everything. And that's why we praise him. So I just want you to think about those things that God has brought you through. Those trials, those situations, those hardships. And God was whatever it is that I needed him to be. But the thing about God, he can be a thing of yours at the same time. You may need him to be a deliverer, but I may need him to be a healer. You may need him to be a provider, but I may need him to be a protector. And that's why we praise him today.
lift his name. Somebody ought to lift his name, Jesus. Somebody ought to just think about that name. Somebody ought to reverence that name, Jesus. You are everything that we need. You are everything that we desire. You are everything that we need, God. We trust in you with all of our hearts. With all of our minds, heart, and souls we call on. Somebody and say, I know you got some issues. 
issues going on back at home, but all of the crown. I know you may not feel your best and it's hard to lift your hands in worship, but all of the crown. Come on, you ought to decree by faith all of the crown. All of the crown is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. While it's time, all of the ground is sinking sand.
just a few reminders. So let me thank those persons that are responsible for the camp this week, on this past week. Amen. What a wonderful, what a wonderful effort. And what a wonderful effort. And I would tell you, I, I continue to, I continue to brag on the Lord's Archbishop and the Baptist Church because we do have our A-team. Amen. We got an A-team here uh, that when it's time to do the, do the work, I mean, we got the folk to do it. The Lord has blessed us with the talent and gifts to do what needs to be done in this kingdom. Amen. I'm doing right here at 4466. Amen. If you if you're still on the B team or the C team, amen. I, come on, come on on the A team. Amen. Get involved in some of the things that are that are going on. Let's pray for those members of our families that are traveling. Uh, uh, the Webb family, they are traveling today. So Sister Esther, uh, she's out in the hour watching us. Was the Lynch's they are traveling as well. Let's pray for them uh, as they uh, enjoy these last few days of, of their, their break from work and what have you. Um, coming up, coming up real soon. Actually, I'm on August 13th. I'm excited about the fact that uh, Brother Roosevelt McCullough is getting installed over the St. Clair Baptist Church. Uh, I'm excited about that. We'll be telling you more about that on uh, July 26th. That's going to be a Wednesday night. We're going to be over at the Jones Grove Baptist Church. Amen. And uh, we got about 30, we got about 35, maybe 40 people on Bible study on Wednesday. Uh, we got about 200 members of those ones that are not on Bible study on Wednesday can come to Jones Grove. <laughs> You can come over to the parking lot, watch it, and, and be in Bible study, and then come on in church when it's all over. And we figure out a way. Jones Grove is over in Louisville, Georgia, so we would love to have you share with us on that, over there at that uh, situation. Y'all heard about our revival that's coming up. We're not going to have Bible study in August, but on Wednesday night, I would love for us to be praying together, praying for the revival, for the next night's revival that collectively or individually, but Wednesday night is going to be designated as prayer night, and we're going to pray for the revival from on that Thursday night, and, and our prayer is that, our prayer is that the simple song that we sing during revival, say, Lord, send the revival, not just another preaching service, not just another service that we can raise some money, not a, not a service that we just come out and fellowship, but we need a revival. We need our, our souls to be revived. This is our first one in, in years. So let's plan on doing that every Thursday night, before Thursday nights in, the, in August. And then, uh, and then uh, I, I heard yesterday, and I talked to moderator Haversham this morning, Lord Ebenezer is going to be at Noah's Ark on uh, June uh, 29th, Saturday before the fifth Sunday. Amen. Noah Ebenezer will be here. It's on the calendar. Amen. And we need the revival. Our association needs a revival. Amen. I spoke to Pastor Habersham today. Amen. We're great like church. We're gradually coming back. But let's set the example here in Noah's Ark on the film. That Saturday before the fifth Sunday. Amen. To get the members back up and invite some of the other folk from the other churches. Uh, maybe that who. Because we've been laxed. Amen. All year. So let's get back in the groove. Amen. It's time to do it. There's always a way for you to give at, 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 the, at, the, at church. And, and listen, giving, giving is a part of worship. Uh, and, and there ought not be times when we come to church if we don't give God something. Amen. Even if you don't have money, you ought to give him all of your praise and all of your worship. Give him your attention. You ought to bring something to the table. Amen. In worship. That's, that's, what it, that's that encounter that we're having with God. But the ways we have to give financially, you can be blessing to the ministry financially, is through givelify.com or you can just go to uh, our, our website. Uh, that's a good place to start because if you go to the website, you can get everything else. Noah's Ark, Keysville.org Noah's Ark, Keysville.org You can click on anything you want to click on at our website. So make sure you do that. And we thank you for your gifts and your giving. As a matter of fact, why don't we pray for those givers now? Maybe something we had not prayed for. 
over the past couple of months. You know, we used to pray over the offering. Amen. We used to, we used to do that before we take up the offering or after we take up the offering. And the pandemic that got us in such a rush mode that we, we tend to kind of rush away from some stuff. But let's pray for those givers today. God, we thank you now for those who uh, intend to give, those who have given to this ministry. We thank you for the abundance. We thank you for the overflow. And God, we pray now that because of how they gave, because of why they gave, because of their motivation to give, that you would pour them out a blessing uh, that they won't have need to receive. Continue to hover over their finances, their homes, their families, their jobs. Protect them, God, because you're a faithful God. And God, because you've they, you, you, that measure has been given and you, you, you've allowed them to shake it together and now it's coming back to them a hundredfold continue to bless the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church and those who give to our ministry bless them as only you can it's in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen, Amen. that being said that's a word from the Lord that we want to share with you today Amen I want to share with you today as we continue in a any series or something, whatever we're going to call it, um, turn your Bibles, if you will, to Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 50, beginning with verse number 15. Amen. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. Jill Biden is going to be in town next week in Augusta. And I guarantee you, when she come in, everybody going to stand up. <laughs> Verse 15. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the, greater, for the great wrong they did to you, for their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of God, of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. Amen. Lord, bless your word today. Amen. I want to talk today uh, as we continue on this uh, idea of kingdom principles. I want to talk about uh, the, the power of forgiveness. Amen. The power of let me let me change that 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 I think that's a preposition. Y'all help me out. The power in forgiveness. Is that a preposition? No, that's a that's an adjective. It's a preposition. Okay, I'm I'm waiting on the teachers to get me right. In I want I want to talk about the power in forgiveness. Hey, the power in forgiveness. There's a difference. That's you notice in 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 the, in the sermon that there's a difference in the power of forgiveness and the power that's in forgiveness. Uh, and like we, we're, we're on this little journey. Let me thank God for those first-time guests here, those our, our guests that are sharing with us today. Uh, but 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 we're 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 in this kingdom series, uh, and and but uh, and that's going to be a lot of uh, principles that we want to carry out as we do this series, like reaping and sowing and all those things that come come with uh, how we operate in the kingdom. But, uh, but, but I, we hit the pause button on the first one, and that is this standard called forgiveness. Uh, uh, I mean, this was supposed to be just a one sermon on forgiveness. It's supposed to be just that one sermon, like all the rest of them hopefully would be on kingdom principles. But, but somehow forgiveness seems to be such an important uh, topic, such a major topic in our faith. Listen, we, 
we have just got, got into this sub-series or mini-series of some sub-points uh, on this idea of forgiveness. Uh, uh, last week I tried to talk about the principles of forgiveness and we pulled away three nuggets uh, about that, about that uh, forgiveness from Matthew chapter 18 we, uh, verses 21 through 35 and what we discovered from that was we, uh, from that wicked servant that wicked servant who got forgiven but wouldn't forgive we discovered uh, that 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 uh, we need to remember we need to remember and never for, never forget uh, we ought to forgive others because God has forgiven us we learned that we learned that from, from him uh, from the scripture last we also learned that if we don't forgive Thank God won't forgive us. Thank you on the left hand side. L listen, uh, for, for being tuned in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but listen, uh, but we concluded that if we're not careful, unforgiveness can lead to other sins. That was last week. We talked about it. We talked about that. But in, in my preparation this week, and I was trying to continue this, I discovered, I discovered something that for some reason that the Lord has led me in more than one time. Uh, since I've been here to do something to, uh, to preach about forgiveness and I didn't discover that I just thought I had this grand idea that I'm got a, I got a brand new series but when I'm looking through my notes and studying I'm, I'm finding stuff that's already highlighted that I've dealt with this at least twice in the 26 years that I've been here in a deeper uh, in a deeper situation talking about this idea of forgiveness so i guess my, i guess if the holy spirit is true maybe there's some lingering unforgiveness that the lord needs us to address uh, listen so so, so i, I, I want to do it and, and in the past in my looking at my notes in my past notes i found out that i i addressed and i tried to clear up some fallacies or some misconceptions about forgiveness one of them is that forgiveness is not forgetting okay that's psychologically impossible uh you can you can you can forgive but but the mind as long as we got brains it's going to be somewhere in our subconscious so forgetting totally forgetting is impossible uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that next week. But, but then also I, I try to clear up the fallacy that, that forgiveness does not make the pain disappear. Because you forgive somebody, that means that you still don't hurt. Listen, it, it, and it really, it really doesn't mean that you don't want justice. Amen. You, you listen, you want God to do vengeance, but you still can seek justice if there's a wrong involved. Forgiveness does not mean your position, that you position yourself to be hurt by that person again. I'm still getting that feeling. I'm in the right, I'm in the right space. I'm getting that feeling. I'm in the right space. But listen, listen. listen, listen forgiveness, and, and these are past lessons that, I, that I've taught. I thought it is relevant to, uh, today. Forgiveness is usually a process, but sometimes it can be a one-time event. So the question, the question for my little lesson today, our teaching today, is, is where is the power in forgiveness? I don't, we don't have to look far. We're looking at this fellow. If we go to the book of Genesis, starting with chapter 37, we pick up this fellow by the name of Joseph. He's our friend. He's our foreparent. And, and we know him well here at the Ark because we spent at least four months in Bible study studying the life of Joseph. Uh, and just last Wednesday, we had a presentation. Someone did a presentation, uh, used his life as an example of that fruit of the Spirit called, called patience. Listen, he, uh, Joseph gives us so many lessons, and you ought to study him sometime, that can be applied to our lives. So, so today, let's pluck something out. Let's, let's look at something from Joseph's life about the power in forgiveness. And let's look at this idea of how... He found power in forgiveness. Y'all already know the story. I don't have to go over to you, but if I, if I can highlight it with, with you, it was left in the Bible as a powerful example of forgiveness and a whole lot of other lessons. Actually, there's some restoration in there, but I don't think I'm going to touch that one right now. But, but, but it is, it is a, this story is a complex story, so don't think it's just one of these little simple Humpty Dumpty stories that you can tell and you will understand it. it, it this, this is a story. It, it spans his whole life. It started with him from birth all the way to, to, to he got in charge, being the second in charge over there with, with the Pharaoh. It's a complex story. Uh, it, it involves, listen, 
uh, the good part about it is that we can preach about this alone. That's why it took us four months to deal with it in Bible study. It involves what, uh, what most of us have to deal with in real life today. That's why this is a relevant life. Listen, he had to deal with family drama and family mess. I heard three sections. I didn't hear the full section. Family, he, he had to deal with family drama. Uh, he had to deal with abandonment, multiple betrayals, false accusations, and lies. He had to deal with haters, jealousy, schemers, and even political foolishness. Listen, so it's a major story, and it, it, it's not a story we can just apply, apply so simple like that. It's not, the, it's not a, just a concise teaching like Peter walking on water. Some parts of the story of Joseph is simple uh, for a children's story, but, but the, to understand his life, it's very involved. So how, how, what do we know about this story? We know, first of all, that he was hated by his brothers. According to Genesis 37 and 5, now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even the more. He was hated by his brothers, and his brother, he was thrown in a pit. Genesis 37, 24, then they took him and cast him into a pit. I won't go no more. Watch this. And he was sold into slavery twice. His brother sold him into slavery uh, to, uh, to the Mennonites, and the Mennonites turned around and sold him into slavery to Potiphar, a two-time slave. There he is in slavery. Uh, not, listen, but then watch this. Then, then he was thrown into prison because uh, somebody's wife lied on him. False accusations. Thrown into prison on lies. He was uh, uh, about that. Business. Watch this. This is one we usually forget. He was forgotten by the people that he blessed. His gift was interpreting dreams. Y'all remember that? And while he was in prison, he interpreted the dream of the chief butler. But he told the chief butler, when you get out of here, please remember me. But the very one he ministered to forgot about him. <laughs> The very one that he poured his blessing out to forgot him. I, I don't, I, maybe maybe y'all ain't get that. The very people that you do good to are the very people might turn their back on you. I thought I might have gone back across the track on you. I mean, you don't you don't did everything for them. I mean, you don't. I mean, you don't, you, you had dinner ready every day. You rolled out the the silk carpet. You had peppermint on the on the silk. Uh, down pillow. I mean, you had the right spread, the right sheet. I mean, you had everything, the warm water in the tub. You had all of that, and still they forgot about you. I mean, you came home, you paid all the bills. But yet and still, you couldn't get a dinner. Couldn't get a warm tub of bath water. He, he was forgotten about. He was in a terrible, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm moving, I ain't going to say that. I let, but but, but here, this is a major story. I want to I say this because I want to teach this because you, you hear a lot of this talk. And one of the misappropriations of, of, of misapplications of this story is when we talk about uh, when we try to use this story alone exclusively uh, for abuse victims, that th this is how they ought to respond to their abuser. No, no. Now, this, as if it's a one-time application. What, what needs to be understood that in, in order to apply Joseph's story wisely, we need to begin by tracing the theme of power in his forgiveness. You got to understand, what, how, watch, how the power, watch how the power moves in, 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 in his life. Joseph was born with power. I mean, he was born with the power of the favor of his, of his daddy. His father, he was his father's favorite son, younger son, favorite son. That, that means, listen, that means he, he didn't have to do, he, he didn't have to take out the trash. He didn't have to do the dirty chores. He got the easy chores. I mean, he didn't have to wash the dishes, he had to dry the dishes. He didn't have to sweep, he could vacuum. I mean, he, he, he had the easy chores around the house. Listen, he got the nicer clothes. He got better clothes than his brothers. That's true. It's in the Bible. He, he was treated differently like that. Listen, he got to stay up later 
on school night. And watch this. This one, I, this one, I, 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 I wasn't there. I wasn't there, but I bet it was like this. Whenever, whenever, whenever his mom Rachel would cook a cake, Joseph got to lick the bowl. Y'all remember that? He got the chocolate, the lift, the, 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 the cake stuff that was left, the batter that was left in the bowl. Yeah, uh, uh, and then he was the first one to taste the cake when it came out of the oven. He had power. He had that kind of power in his family. But watch this. Uh, but but Joseph does not control or manage his power well. He brags about his power to his brothers. He harasses his brothers. He, 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 in, in, in hindsight, in hindsight, we can say that Joseph's actions toward his brothers were actually rude and offensive. Why are we trying to paint a pretty, too pretty of a picture of Joseph? I mean, he was really being ugly because he had an upper hand. Look at you with them raggedy clothes on. They going walking to school together. Look at them. How you like my new? And just, I mean, he was a little rude with the with the rest of the boys, but but then but he had that kind of power. But in, in today's culture, all we would tell Joseph to do is that you need to apologize to your brothers for being for being ugly and rude toward them. But 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 we wouldn't call the police because he didn't commit a crime. He he had that kind of power. But then watch this: watch the power shift into his brother's hands. He, they, they, I mean, they, he was outnumbered 11 to 1. They are older, they are stronger, uh, and, 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 but guess what? They didn't manage their power well. Listen, they beat him up, they beat him, threw him in the well, sold him into slavery, and guess what? If I had my badge back then, if I had my badge back then, I could have charged them brothers with, with the crime of kidnapping and human trafficking. They would have went to jail because they committed a crime. They used their power to commit crimes. So there's a difference in how we, dis, how we, dis, how we dispense our power. Amen. We're not to be criminals. But, but, but listen, but thank God that's not how the story ends. When, listen, when it's all said and done, Joseph has the power all over again, as we know the story, because he, uh, he, he is second in command to the Pharaoh, and, and he controls the distribution of grain and food while there was a famine in the land. If anybody wanted to eat, they had to come through Joseph. All that power that he had. Now, but the one, and that's why we have to commend Joseph. That's why we can preach about Joseph on Sunday morning to the believers because he uses his power, watch this, to bless and to redeem instead of to abuse and retaliate. He used the power that he had to bless folk, not to retaliate against folk. He used his power, he used his power uh, in, in, instead of, uh, 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 instead of, bl in, bl instead of uh, mitigating them, instead of retaliating against them, he redeemed them from starvation and poverty. And I don't want to be a political, I don't want to be political about that, but there's, there's something about this idea of politics where everybody likes power, but then when it comes time to use their power, they're using it for the rich and the famous, not for the orphan and the widow, the poor and the locked out. Something about power that can be misappropriated. But he uses his power to be a blessing to others. And, and according to Matthew chapter 18 from last week, uh, we, we were required to be like Job. That is, we got to forgive seven times 70. Uh, unlimited forgiveness. And, and, and then here's what we hope for. We, we are required to do that, but we wish that others would do the same thing. But in a real sense, when you study this dude, when you study Joseph, when you look at Joseph in a real sense, you got to understand, you got to understand where he is in this sense. In this sense. Uh, Joseph, Joseph uh, this life teaches us, Joseph graduated from the University of Hard Knocks. He majored in personal pain. He majored in being misunderstood and the injustices and he, he majored in he majored in being mistreated he went through these hard times and watch this and, and it can be he can be viewed as an example for all of us especially believers to follow him 
But in order to do that, you got to do something that Joseph had. I want to I want to throw a new term out for you today. I, you got to have what I think Joseph had, and that is he had a spirit of forgiveness. In other words, forgiveness was in him. It wasn't. He didn't have to think about it. It was something about him in order to go through everything that he went through. He had to be operating in a spirit of forgiveness. You, 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 you got to have that spirit. And, and, and maybe, maybe it's the same idea we come out praying without ceasing. That means you got to have an attitude of prayer. You got to have an attitude of, of forgiveness, finding a way for forgiveness. But, but it was a good thing for, for Joseph to, to forgive his brothers because watch this. Because what his forgiveness did and what our forgiveness does is it honors God. It honors God, but it also frees us from bitterness. It frees us from Gaviscon and Maalox. Prozac. It frees us from that kind of thing. And, 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 and we can say this with, with no, no doubt about it, no reservation. We can say that this is what God wanted for Joseph. This is exactly what God wanted for Joseph. And we can also say with confidence that God was patient in Joseph's journey. Listen, you got to understand that it took 13 chapters from 37 to 50 to cover his life. Uh, 24 years uh, to, to, to come to this place of forgiveness. It was a process for him to get there. But, but then he, he talked about restoration. He, he restored him. I don't want to get into restoration. That's another series. But just let me throw this out at you. This is just free. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I won't get, We won't get nothing for this one. But but this idea of forgiveness and restoration, uh, that's another subject matter that I'll deal with later, maybe next year. But, but this idea of restoration, because it's difficult. Forgiveness, listen, we think forgiveness is hard. Restoration is even harder. <laughs> Example, that, that if, 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 you let, uh, if you let your next door neighbor use your car to go to Walmart in Augusta, and they wreck your car, and you had insurance, but you had to pay the $1,000 deductible, you can forgive them of that. And so don't worry about it. It's just an accident. But the question is, after you forgive them, if they ask you next week, can they drive your car to Walmart again? That's restoration. We can forgive them. But ain't but a few of us can talk about restoring. No, baby, you, uh, yeah, you, you wrecked my car. No, you ain't. Uh, let, let me, that's next year. That's a series for next year on restoration. But, we, but, but this idea of Joseph, watch this. Joseph actually, and, and when we read it, it's an example of us. But listen, he broke, what's, what he did was he broke the cycle of power. Listen, because he didn't relate, he didn't look at his brothers as, the second in command, he actually invited them back in as part of the family. Uh, but, but even in the story, before, before, before he restored the relationship, he took steps while he, he took steps to vet them before he forgave them. So, so forgiveness is not carte blanche. Forgiveness is the idea. Sometimes you have to vet the situation. And what he did was, I ain't got time to deal with it. What he did uh, for us with Dr. Smith was what he did with, with them. He tested them to make sure that their hearts had changed. He wanted to make sure they still wasn't mean and ugly and, you know, still mistreating the, the Benjamin and the, and, the, and, the, and the dad. Of the, he, so, so he ran them through a test. And sometimes you got to test folks. They said, they, 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 you know, you, you got to know whether they deserve forgiveness. Whew. You have to run that, run that little test on them to see if they're, if they're doing the same thing to them that they did to you. That means they ain't learned nothing. Man, I'm on sinking sand, right? On the other ground. 
But, so he tested it. So, because he wanted, he, but, but, but he, he, he was being wise. And so let me just, run, let me cut across the field. This, this idea of forgiveness and having to suffer through all of these things, that God, that's, a, that's a purpose of God. All God has a purpose for all of us. Hang on to that right there. He has a purpose for every believer. Actually, a purpose for every life that's born on this earth. But listen, but, 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 but the Joseph gets to that thing. So it's a purpose of our suffering, purpose of being mistreated, purpose of somebody doing wrong to us or, or causing pain to us. But listen, because it's, a, it's actually a big part of God's plan. Sometimes God has to send us through some stuff to know whether we can handle some other stuff. He, he needs to know we can handle a minor assignment before he gives us a major assignment. That, so, so forgiveness is a big part of God's plan. But watch this. But I, I wanted to say this to somebody. So it's been, uh, it's been 50 years. I've been all this time. I done tried to forgive. Uh, but it, it ain't never too late. But I was said to it, don't let it be said too late. Don't come in here talking about when somebody stretched across this. I wish I had asked them for forgiveness. Don't, 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 don't wait this. And I, I would suggest to you time-wise, since we don't know the day or the hour, you might want to try to get after it. Amen. Amen. That, 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 but but, but it's, it's never too late to forgive. So let, for, for, forgive. I don't, I don't want to minimize this in my little series. And I don't know why I'm hanging around on this series in Noah's Ark, but, but forgiveness is difficult. Listen, especially when it's by your homie or your kinfolk. I mean, when your kinfolk call you names that you know you ain't. It hurts. And it's difficult. And, and, and like, like Joseph, he loved his family, but all this envy and strife had got in the way of these brothers. They couldn't handle it. But, 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 but even all that he went through, he still forgave. Some point in our lives, some point of our lives, uh, uh, forgiveness, listen, what we're really doing is we're holding on to anger and resentment and, and thoughts of revenge only because what we've been through. But listen, God brought you through it. Listen, so, so if you're holding on to, and I want to pause here, if you're holding on to that resentment, if you're holding on to the thoughts of getting back or that anger, guess who the prisoner is? You are the prisoner. You might as well have bars around your heart. I mean, you're locking your own self up when you don't forgive. You, listen, you are the jailer who has thrown away the key. And the key is forgiveness. Uh, listen, because forgiveness is actually, actually for, for us, right? Forgiveness is not for the person. It's for us. That's why, that's why I, can, I can look at some folk that I, I should have I did that too, but I ain't said what I should have did, but I can look at them now and say, God bless you. I, I hope you have a wonderful life. I hope you get a raise on your job. And, and, and a Mercedes 550 or whatever that is. I, I just wish you the best. Because I'm free. Listen, I'm free from whatever it is. I'm, hey, I was, listen, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, for this sermon, I've been trying to think of somebody that I need to forgive. I can't think of nobody. Because I was going to I was gonna go talk to them. Hey, I know somebody that I have forgiven. But I ain't got no, I ain't hanging on none of that other stuff. Even, even, even that girl that wouldn't go out and get peace with me. I'll uh, 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 go to Shoney's and get that, uh, uh, with the y'all remember Shoney? Try to get that Sunday, Brownie Sunday. She wouldn't go with me. Now she want to go. <laughs> and Shoney's <is> closed. <laughs> but, uh, it's over. Listen. Forgiveness helps us to remove, it removes the pain from our hearts. And sometimes, we, and, and, and listen, this idea, it allows us to move on without that anger. And I wanted to, I guess I'm teaching this lesson because sometimes we're even, we're even, sometimes our anger is not at people, sometimes our anger is at God. Because something happened in our lives that we felt God should have controlled. 
But we ought to understand the providence and the sovereignty of God, that God can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, to whom he wants to do it, where he wants to do it, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it, because he is God. Um, that's why he says we ought to say forgive our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness is, that's power in forgiveness. That's all I'm trying to say. Let me give you three little, three little pieces that you want to take home with you to maybe to, to prove my point in this power in forgiveness. Listen, the, the, the first part of the power in forgiveness that I, after all I done said already, listen, the power in forgiveness is that forgiveness demonstrates the peace of God that surpasses human comprehension. Somebody ain't writing that down. You need, you, you need, you need, you need to go look at the video. Power and forgiveness demonstrate the, what, what does Philippians say? Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. It's the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Listen, we, listen we don't, I don't know. I wonder what Joseph's neighbors were saying. I wonder what those other folk uh, in the in the in the, in the, in the staff were saying in the government were saying uh, I don't wonder what those who knew Joseph thought about his actions of forgiving his evil brothers I wonder what they thought about but but but, but I don't know what they were thinking about for for those in the room today if we are honest with ourselves I mean we will have a hard time understanding how Joseph did what he did you ain't holy you ain't you ain't that holy that you wouldn't go like, I, that was me. I wouldn't be doing that. He didn't did me like that, baby. Especially, man, y'all be, that was on Facebook, and y'all, y'all, y'all be commenting all over the place. How you, Joe, you all not do that, man. Look what they did to you. They did this, did this, and this. Now you all, and you asking me, and you forgave them? Y'all get Joseph a hard time. We would get Joseph a hard time. But this, this idea of forgiveness, it has the ability to give us peace that the world don't understand. Some of y'all know some folk now, probably in this room right here, they, doing, they are in a space that you think they ought not be in because you know their business. And you wonder how they stay in the space they are in. But you don't know the whole story. You don't understand. Forgiveness, forgiveness does something for us. It gives us the peace that surpasses the world's understand and it does uh, the other thing the other piece to my little my little uh, my little simple sermon is this that, that that this power in forgiveness it demonstrates that you are operating watch this from a godly perspective because most of our decisions most of our decisions point at yourself most of my decisions are fleshly but joseph saw this thing from the big picture Joseph said, you meant it for bad. But what I know about my God is he meant it for my good. In other words, what, 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 what Joseph was able to do, he, had to, he looked at his haters and his enemies and his, his evil brothers and his family. He looked at them and said, you don't understand what really happened to you is God used you to elevate me. <laughs> Boy, I wish I could preach right here now, cause I, I can I can tell you that to somebody in this room, the, the very thing that somebody did to hurt you, all it did was help. That's why you making more money than you ever made in your life, because they fired you from that job, because they got you fired, because they squealed on you, and now you're better off. You're better off because they fired you. You're better off because they repossessed your house, but now you got a bigger place. You got a finer place. Listen, you listen. You, oh man, I bet I don't go there. Don't do it. You got a better situation because they walked out on you. Stay on top of the table. You're better off because they left. I, I heard. I heard two amen. Listen, while other folk plotting on you, you got to know that God, you got to see what well, God it must be. And can I, I preach this in the sermon? Well, God is always up to something. So rather than asking God, uh, uh, asking him why, just asking him, uh, what am I to learn from this? 
Don't, don't ask God, oh, God, why you allowed them to do this to me? God, why you know? God is always up to something. And what he's really trying to do is position you that you might be blessed. Now, listen, you got to operate from a godly perspective. Whatever, whatever, what? Listen, you got to come from that place where whatever God has for me, it ain't for Deacon Matt. Whatever God has for me, Larry can't have what God has for me. What God has for me, King Henderson can't have it. But Gary can't get what God has for me. I got to operate in that space to know that whatever I'm dealing with is because God's got something on the other side. You're looking at a witness right now because the enemy tried to talk me out of some stuff. But God has blessed me to the point that what they meant for my bad, God turned it around for good because he is the one that's in the blessing business. You got look at a God. Stop looking through your fleshly lens. Stop looking through your that, that, that lens of your, 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 your flesh and doing that like you got to get into the spirit. It's a Holy Spirit. What is it, God? What are you doing right here? How in the world can all this happen to my children? How can all in the world all this happen to all this around me? All of my money going and all my job is got folk acting crazy. I got a bad disease in my body. God, he said, just hang in there for a little while. He said, I'm going to work this thing out for your good. If you just stay in and trust me through this thing like like joins a bitch you gotta stay right there when you forgive somebody that you have when you wrong it, it is not about them it's about it's about the god in you that's why you can look at that that's why you can look at uh you can look at uh back door john and pray for him Somebody turn the air conditioner. Yeah. You, you, can, you, can, you can look at them and pray, and pray a public prayer for them. God bless them. Um, bless him, God. He lost his job. Bless him because he needs a blessing. Give him a raise, God. Bless him because I know, I know that I, I can look at him. It ain't for them. It's about the God in me. And because I got the God in me, and I know that God will not fail me. And if I can forgive those who wronged and wronged me, my, my enemies, I know that God will build a bridge over my enemies. I mean, he's got a way of doing something for us that we cannot do for ourselves because we know that as, as faithful children of God, we know that we are hurt by others and by circumstances. In the long run, it will be for our good. You don't believe me, you don't just read what he says here. The devil meant it from my bad. But God turned it around for my good. I think there are about two or three people in here who say, I used to have it real bad. They thought I would never make it out of the ghetto. Thought I would never get off uh, the welfare program. But the Lord brought me out and look where he brought me from. Got stuff I don't deserve. Got money in the bank. I got children that's doing the right thing. He meant it from a bad. But I thank God that when we go through some stuff, I think Paul would tell us that all things work together for good. Joseph said that for them that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. And that's what Joseph said. I'm trusting God. I'm going to have faith in God that I'm going to come out of this pit. I got faith in God that I'm going to come out of this pit. I've got faith in God that those lies won't stick. But somehow God is going to elevate me. So you got to remember for yourself that you got to look at it from a godly perspective and forgive those who persecute you. And then you got to have that peace of God that surpasses all understanding. But if I can close my little sermon with three, my third little suggestion to you that is, and that is you got to understand the power in forgiveness. It propels us into the purpose that God had for us in the first place. Don't want you to miss it. It propels us into the godly purpose that he had for us in the first place. Let me go on and close it right here because, because God gave Joseph the gift of interpreting dreams. He revealed his purpose his, his purpose to Joseph in a dream. He, 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 he told Joseph in a dream that, 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 that there would be 11 bundles of grain representing his 11 brothers that one day they're going to bow down to him as a bundle. He interpreted the dream. 
But the problem was he told the dream to his brothers. And, and just I put a nugget there, be careful who you tell your dreams to. But, but the truth of the matter, in the other dream, the son representing his father, the moon representing his mother, and the 11 stars representing his brother. The Bible says they would all bow down to Joseph. But look what happens over in Genesis chapter 45 through 50. And that is all of that came true because now he's in that high place that God has promised him. In other words, because he had a forgiving spirit, God held on to his dream. God allowed him to, to fulfill the purpose that he had for him. Can I tell somebody today that forgiveness could be the vehicle that propels you to your very purpose that God has you in your life. So that means if you're holding on to unforgiveness, that means you'll never get to the purpose that God has for you. Or at least it might get paused in your life. So what I'm trying to tell the church is that you need to remember that, that God's purpose for your life cannot be fulfilled if you got unforgiveness in your heart. So you need to come on in and make up in your mind however you have to do it. You need to send a text message. Write it down in your journal. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your hurt. Tell him all about your pain. And then tell that person or that circumstance that got you into that unforgiving place. You need to get that thing straight because you want to live and get to where God has you or what God's purpose for your life is. And some of us are stuck right now because we can't forgive somebody for something 25 years old and we are stuck and can't get to our purpose. We are miserable and can't be free. But you ought to go ahead and get that thing straight and break the shackles on your wrists. Break the shackles on your legs. The shackles on your heart. We can't praise God in the church today because we are worried about somebody in the room that we have not forgiven and is paining us. We don't want to slip and see us lifting up our hands. But the devil is a liar. I'm going to praise God even in the midst of my enemies because I have forgiven them. I've given them to God and I pray that God will set them free because he, when he sets you free, you are free in me. I want to tell you today that there's power in forgiveness, but we've got to learn how to forgive. I'll talk to you next week about the process, but you've got to make up in your mind and get it down in your heart. I want to be free. I'm tired of hating folk. I'm tired of hating on folk. I'm tired of envy. I'm tired of plotting on folk. I want to be free so I can celebrate with the Lord. I want to be like Joe because Joe is our example. But did I ever tell Noah's Ark? Did I ever remind y'all that Joseph is a type of Christ? Did I ever tell y'all that? I need you to talk back to me. I, did I ever tell you that Joseph was a shadow of Jesus? In other words, he was something that gave us a model of what Jesus would be like. Well, let me help you out. Joseph was a shepherd. Jesus is the great shepherd. Joseph was loved by his father. Jesus was the beloved of his, son, his father. As a matter of fact, he was the only begotten son. Joseph was hated by his brothers. Come in the New Testament. Jesus was hated by his brothers. Joseph was 30 years old when he began to minister. But Jesus was he was 30 years old when he began his public ministry. And all I'm trying to tell you is that we can learn from Joseph because there's some Jesus in Joseph that we can learn from. Joseph's father sent him to seek his brothers and to find him out. Jesus sent his son to look out for me and you. I said, Joseph is the type of Jesus, Joseph's brother. They did not believe his dreams. Jesus' brothers, they did not believe his words. I 
said Joseph was a type of Jesus. I gotta sit down now. But Joseph uh, was stripped of his coat. Y'all remember that. They took his coat and put animal blood on it and took it back to his father to prove that he was dead. He was stripped of his coat. But y'all remember, I don't care on his cross. Jesus they found that his feet on the ground was gambling for his robe. They was gambling for his top coat. They were gambling because he was stripped of his coat. I come to tell you, you need to understand if you can model Joseph, you might be modeling Jesus. Jesus was cast down into a pit somewhere to die. But do you know that Jesus was put in a tomb where they thought he was dead? But I'm glad that I know for myself that Joseph was taken out of that pit and got out of that thing alive. It was early on Sunday morning. That Jesus got up out of the grave with all power in his hands. You ought to model Joseph because that's power in the forgiveness. That's power in forgiving. That's power in it. Well, I, I told you last week, but I don't care. I gotta say it again. And I keep on saying it as long as we are talking about forgiveness. There is no forgiveness. Like Jesus did, just like Joseph did. Forgive his brothers. Jesus is up on the cross and said, Forgive him, but they know not what they do. I don't know about y'all, but I don't know nobody in this room today. I don't know nobody that I'm holding a grudge against. That's why I can say for myself, I love the Lord because he heard my cry and he did it my every wrong long as I live and trouble will rise I'm gonna hasten to his throne I wanna do what he called me to do because he is the great God and one thing I do know is that when I would do wrong when I would do good evil is always present but I got a God I have a Jesus I have a Father I have a Holy Spirit that will forgive me of my sins and he can forgive me as a rich undone. I don't know why I can't forgive somebody because they crossed my path, because they stepped on my toes, because they said something bad about me. I say, I forgive you and God loves you and I'm glad that I know who he is. His name is Jesus, the Son of the living God. His name is Jesus. His name is baby boy. Jesus, the one who came down through 42 generations. He's the same Jesus that opened blinded eyes. The same Jesus that put walking in crooked legs. He's the same Jesus. I tell the same Jesus. He is the one. I bet he's the one that picked me up and turned my life around. And I'm not the same that I used to be. I'm the man. I'm so glad that he changed my life. I've been changed. My name has been changed. The angels in heaven done sign my name. And that's why I can praise his name. Y'all excuse me for a minute. That's the end of my sermon. But can I just go ahead and take 30 seconds and tell God thank you. Thank you. God, I thank you. I thank you, God, for saving me. I thank you, God, for changing my mind. God, I thank you for blessing me. God, I bless your name. I call out your name because you are a good God. You are the lily, my lily, when I'm down in the valley. God, when I'm in troubled waters, you are my bridge. Somebody said my time is bad, but he is my rose of Sharon. And every now and then, I feel like I can run through walls and jump to troops because he is, I said, he's my God. Is there anybody here can tell God, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for getting me out of the darkness, bringing me to the marvelous light. 
thank you God for looking past my sins for looking past my wickedness and blessing me anyhow and I'm glad that I'm in a good place that he keeps on blessing me over and over and over and over and over and over he keeps on blessing me showers of blessings I say he keeps on blessing me I know he is because I got more than I ever had got more sense than I ever had I got something that the world can't take away I got some joy that some mean faces in the church can't take away from me because this joy this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away I'm done with my sermon but can I tell somebody that you haven't forgiven them yet you ought to get there and you will find out for yourself that can't nobody can't nobody do you like Jesus And now I can walk through the valley of the shadows of death and I will fear no evil. I can go into the enemy's camp and understand that there's no weapon that's formed against me that will prosper in my life. And when it looked like I'm surrounded by my enemies, I got some good news, and that is greater is he that's on the inside of me than them that are in the whole wide world. That's why I ain't worried about no Democrat. I ain't worried about no Republican. I ain't worried about no Trump. I ain't worried about no Green up there in South Georgia. I know who God is. There's power. In forgiveness. I'm done. I'm done. I'm Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom. From the bottom of my heart. That's where it's got to come. To from. the depths of my soul. Oh, yes, Lord. Completely. My soul says yes, oh, oh, see, yes, Lord, yes. Oh, yes, Lord. 
Lord. Extend the invitation for this like Christian discipleship. Man, woman, boy, or girl. That you may come to receive him as Lord and Savior of your life. Do you have him in your heart? Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Would you yes, come? Lord. Yes, Lord. Would you come? Man, From woman, the boy, girl. Of my heart Make a decision today. To the depths of my soul. I want to be able to forgive. Yes, Lord. But I can't do it without the power of Jesus Christ. Completely. Yeah. Process of forgiving someone. Find a way that you can send them a text message today or at your earliest convenience. Find a way that you can relate to them. Amen. That you forgive them. It's not for them, it's for you. Do, do that, and you'll find yourself feeling better. Listen. Because of Joseph's spirit of forgiveness, he became the head, and his enemies became the tail. That's what forgiveness would do for you. I mean, that same person that you, that, that person or those people or that circumstance, he would give you authority over that situation. Amen. Guess what? They end up needing you before you need them. I, I know it's a process. It took Joseph 24 years, but I'm, I'm admonishing you that as soon as you can, find a way. And if you want to send a text message, you might be brave enough to go in person like Joseph did. Look him in the face and let him know that I forgive you. Find a way to get into the process. Amen. It'll make our church a better place, a freer atmosphere to worship God. Amen. To the depths of my soul. Oh, yes, Lord. I don't know why that feels like that. Completely, completely, yes. My soul. somebody that's going to send a text right now. Take out your phone and do it right now. Just text one of your enemies and just tell them, I forgive you. I just heard a sermon. I forgive you. And it might not be an enemy, just somebody who just mistreated you. Let it come from the heart. Let it come from the heart. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Help me, yes. My Bless you. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get away from this. I just got an email. Something 
say is, suppose that person that wronged me that I'm still angry at, suppose they are dead. I'll find that grave. I know that ain't that ain't spiritual. But whatever it takes, I'll go walk to that marker and say, look, I forgave you. I'm trying to get away from it. Whoever it is, let's move in that direction. And listen, I, I ain't going to hold it against you if you ain't got there yet. But I'm saying at least move in that. Let's start moving in that direction of forgiveness. we thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, thank you for giving us a thick enough esophagus that we can swallow this hard word and take it home with us. Take it into our spirits God and let it operate on us from the inside out. Thank you for every worshiper today God. We thank you for every song. We thank you for every raised hand, every hallelujah, every amen. Now, God, as we prepare to dismiss from this place, we know that you're going to go with us, but our prayer is that you would manifest yourself in our lives. Show us that you are with us in every situation. Then God bless the ice cream uh, that uh, will be served in a few moments. Thank you for the resources to, to help some young people with school supplies. When it's all said and done, God, we give you glory. It's not because of us, not because of anything that we have done, but it's because of what you have done for us. And right now, God, my soul says yes to your will and your way. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. This is the will of God.